Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I've got a fun one for you. I am teaching Wrigley to scratch her nails along this scratch board that I made. Well, it's kind of a scratch PVC pipe. It would be more accurate, actually. Um, you guys, the first part of this video, I'm showing you how you train this behavior. And then the last part of the video, I go over how I actually made this right here with the PVC pipe and the sandpaper. So you get kind of both parts of this, being able to make the thing and then being able to train the thing. So this is what the final behavior turns into um, and end up ends up looking like this is probably my fourth session in with the scratch board. Um, I basically want Wrigley to scratch her nails, emphasizing her nails scratching over the board. So I take everything at first and I'll go into that right now. This is our first training session, very first time introducing the scratch board to Wrigley. What you're going to want to do is initially click and treat for any interest in it. It's kind of going back to those shaping concepts that you guys have seen in my other videos. I'm just clicking and treating her for basically walking up to it and being interested in it. Um, Wrigley has a tendency to offer her paw for a lot of shaping activities and it just so happened that she started to paw the thing literally right away. If your dog is not offering their paw, if they know how to like shake paws on cue, you guys can cue that and instead of them targeting your hand, you put your hand right in front of the scratch board and move it out of the way so your dog actually ends up like scratching the scratch board and touching the scratch board with their paw and you can click and treat for that. Um, but if your dog does not, ho not know how to shake paws, you guys can shape it uh, from the beginning with just some interest and then building it up from there to your dog touching it with their paw. So. This is kind of my progression in this first session working with Wrigley. I first was clicking and treating for any interest. Now I'm more particular about what I'm clicking and treating for. I really want her to target her paw on the sandpaper part. That's kind of the next part of this. And then you'll see me start to click and treat for her actually like sticking her nails out a little bit more. I'm looking for the audible while well, listening for the more audible scratching sound that she makes against the scratch board and clicking and tossing a treat. You guys can, I like to toss treats away to gauge my dog's excitement and comfort level when it comes to this kind of stuff. If I toss a treat away and my dog decides to come back, clearly they're still interested in the activity. Um, and then if they choose to walk off, that's something that you should take note of too. If you guys want to get really fancy with this, you can teach your dog the difference between their right and their left paws. Um, I'm working on just naming these. So teaching Wrigley her right foot first, I would teach them one foot and then the other one um, to make things simpler. So I'm just adding a verbal cue onto it. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying right, pausing for a second, and then presenting my hand. So she's actually listening to the words coming out of my mouth. And then what you see me start to do is right. kind of pause a little bit more between me saying right and presenting my hand cue. Right. And I'm yeah. kind of minimizing Good that girl. hand cue after a while. My goal is for her this basically to turn yeah. into like a wave behavior. Sit. And then I can introduce the right. scratch board into it and ask her to again wave target right. the scratch board with her nails. So if you guys want to get really fancy, right. this is how you would add cues to their left and their right paws. Um, these are scratch boards, so nail trimming tools, essentially, for your dog's nails. This is originally what it used to look like. Um, so just your standard PVC pipe, and what I did is I actually cut this in half. We used um, just like a, a Dremel, essentially with like a, a tiny saw attachment. It took way longer than I would have preferred, so I would suggest if you're going to do the PVC pipe, route, I would use some sort of, you know, durable saw that's going to get the job done really quickly. But anyways, um, it got done. It got the job done. We used the Dremel to saw this in half. And then what I did from there is took essentially this and cut it sideways just all the way down the middle. So I ended up with these two halves right here. And then we kind of cleaned up the edges a little bit so it wasn't, there we go, we're focused. So I can rub my finger against it and it's not 
you know, it's not going to cut my finger at all in case she were to scratch that with her paw. I didn't want her to hurt herself. So tr just trimming it up, making it pretty. Um, and then in terms of the sandpaper, I actually made two different ones. These are two different grit sandpapers. Um, I have recently just learned a little bit about sandpaper. The lower grit ones, um, the 60 and the 80 are very low grit when it comes to sandpaper. Those are a little bit more coarse. So when you actually like run your hand across it, you can really feel the raised, you know, grit <laughs> essentially on them versus um, the higher grit ones are, they have more particles basically within them. Softer nails, I would probably go for a higher grit, even into the like past the 120 range more hard coarse nails i'd go for a lower end grit like these here so that's my spiel about sandpaper so i got these i really like them they come in just nice like sheets like this um let me see if i can pull one out of here one-handed they kind of stick to each other because you know they're sandpaper so they just come in these sheets just like that it's kind of like an eight by ten sheet and then um when you put it kind of next to the pvc pipe it actually worked out really well sizing um it's pretty pretty dang close to the actual length of the pvc pipe anyways so all i did to attach this was i found some spray adhesive keep this away from your dogs okay it's it, i have not opened this i am not it's just like leaving it on the floor for really had wrigley to have access to no keep this away from your dogs if you spray it put your dog inside uh we do not want them inhaling this at all but it works really well so far uh i've been really happy with it as an adhesive you just spray the back of these and i also sprayed the inside of the pvc pipe and I just kind of did one of these numbers and popped it in. So it lined up, pressed down the glue. This one dried in, I don't know, probably like five minutes. And then I let them sit overnight so they could air out and, you know, not be fumey at all. But this is kind of the finished product of that. So yeah, I, um, I think this product works pretty well as a, kind of an in-between if you're working on nail trims with your dog yeah so this is a this is a good fun easy project um and oh so the reason that i chose the pvc pipe like duh let me talk about that is i like that it's curved so when wrigley sticks her nails in here if you can kind of imagine that her paw is gonna be again doing this one-handed her paw and her nails kind of are gonna curve to this curve. Now her paw's not this big, but every time she swipes it, instead of it being on a flat surface, so it's only really getting those front nails, I am actually able to get the side nails as well um, that are more at an angle just because of literally the angle of this. So I thought that was a really cool idea um, and creative that someone thought to use a PVC pipe for this. So I wanted to uh, let you guys know that that's that's what I would do if I were gonna make another scratch board, just use a PVC pipe. It's easy to train them to target this smaller area. Um, so yeah, anyways, let's get into the training of this and I can actually show you guys what this looks like in practice. 